Bonjour, hello, and welcome to Max Mountain World. Welcome to the garage, welcome to the Moxon antenna. This is a video, I've done a few videos on this antenna, I've initially started calling it my project. It is my project, it's ongoing, and this is just a video to answer some questions. I've, had a lot, I've done a few videos already up the mountain, out the back, wherever, all sorts, and I have now been posed so many questions on it, I thought I'd do a technical video on it. So, what I'm going to do now, in the bad light, sorry, it changes, it's just the lighting of the garage, uh, and also the, the, the sounds, sounds is a bit of a, I have both these issues in the garage. So forgive that, but whatever. Here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you the um, components of this, of which there are seven. I'm then going to assemble it. I'm then going to give a tour around showing exactly what's what with that. And then I'm going to go on the technical side. Now, I'll explain it as I go, but here we have the video of the 11 meter Moxon two element wire antenna. The first component is the coax, which is, I'll explain that towards the end, uh, it's 11 meters, just over 11 meters, one wavelength. Second component is the wire, which I have set up and ready to go. More details on that as I go once we've got it built. We've got the battens, poles, there's two long ones, two short ones. I'll explain at the end why. These are basically just fishing rods but they're adapted and uh, I'll go through the setup of them with the attachments. This trolley incidentally I've uh, just basically screwed this together so that I can set up and test. That's the bottom of the, the stub pole. I've just got it held in place with these uh, these uh, bungies. And this is the the actual cross beam of it. Now it came bolted up, fixed up, and I've put this bolt in as a modification to hold it in straight so it, it doesn't actually move. This is 40 degrees and this is 140 degrees. Quite important for the setup, and you'll see once it's actually built. Now that there is the seven components, and I'll put it together now. This won't take long. So this will basically just go together in the reverse order to what I've just shown you. One important point, only them, no tools.
Voilà Ready for the radio. I'll start this and say that this isn't the way of doing this. This is how I've done it or rather how we've done it. It was made by a couple of friends of mine in Scotland, Matthew and Mark, in uh, the Scottish borders, not far away from where I'm from. And all I've done is, is I've modified it for the use that I have for it, which basically is going out in the car and building it, using it, putting it away again and I've had to try and make that as efficient as possible because around these parts at this time of year it is so damn cold it really has to happen quickly efficiently so let's have a little look here's the old uh, pole solid the stub pole this is the fixing for the, um, the coax just basically clips on and basic, that, that means there's very little stress on the the wire itself with that and it gives it a bit of flexibility and then the coax 11 meters of it which allowing for the fact that it's sitting on top of a five and a half meter pole it <laughs> it needs to still get to the radio and a bit extra sort of thing so the fishing rods they've extended out the final section i've pre-built all this to be the right lengths. And I've also marked each one, each pole and each corner, four, 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 four. Everything is basically, that's, it goes together the same way every single time. Now, I've got the wire up here, right in front of me here, I think I've got it, yeah. That's, the, the back end is the reflector. These are insulators which are measured to an exact length to give the correct impedance for the dipole effect of the front of it. I've got these clips everywhere. Basically that's the end of the fishing rod. That's a, a, a very, very strong key ring thing. That's uh, something that uh, Matthew supplied me that I don't really need and I've done them in that order so that one they set up correctly but two it means I don't fold the wire when it makes its turn there that's basically still on the flat side up there all the way and it's all just held together with bits of tape and stuff so that's the same thing that I've set up with there and I've got it set up on a piece of wood soldered all the connections behind and got a clamp into this it's uh, just a piece of plywood uh, does the job insulates it it's solid and it's all taped up to keep it all in place and that basically is the, the the antenna itself now the dimensions are critical in this and if i walk away from it you'll see that what I, my most recent exercise in the garage this is obviously at the end but i'll put it somewhere before. Um, I missed one thing out. The last exercise I did was to get it straight. Now once I've got it on the end and on tension of every four post, it's going to keep the same square. It has to. So to make the adjustment, the two back ones I made a little bit shorter and that brought it down just a little bit. 100 millimeters shorter and that's just given it the five degree. I didn't calculate that, I kind of guessed it and it worked. 
So just a little bit on the, the angle of it again, was to have it so that the front element to your right up here is actually higher than the one behind. So it basically gives it a little five degree tilt up the way. It's transmitting away from the terrain and not into it as it were. And the actual dimensions, the dimensions of the rectangle, the dimensions of the uh, insulators, as I mentioned, the dimensions of each wire is all critical. And now I'll show you where I got that information. So that's the, the antenna. It's quite, a, it's a good looking thing. A gadget's always good if it's good looking. And you can see from here as well, you can see across on the left there, when you get it against the roof, you can see the up tilt. And that's been my latest exercise. After, the previous one was to make a new wire and get it exactly to the dimensions I wanted. And the other things was all these little hooks and things that make it all dead easy. So I got it all from this information is on, uh, we just go on to, <laughs> on to X bonnet, uh, which I've got under the light. And it's a Moxon calculator you can get online. Now I've got um, an address there you might want to try. I got this from one of these, or there's actually the addresses in blue at the bottom there. Have a little look around, freeze that, and make a note of it, or uh, whatever. So anyway, I started off with verifying sizes and stuff with my um, request that the antenna was made for a center frequency of 27.2 megs and that I'd be using that wire, which is what, what it came with. But the wire I use is slightly thicker. Oh, here comes a message. And what I did was I, I, I transferred the information. I measured up the original wire, which was correct, but not exactly as I wanted it. So I, I, I went blindly forward and, and I, I came up with this lot. And what I did was I've gotten this Moxon calculator that you get online, you put in, I put 27 dead, uh, and uh, my wire's slightly thicker at 2 mil. It allows for the insulation of the wire in all the calculations. So I made all my calculations, rounded them off. It doesn't have to be millimetre perfect, um, although the nearer you can get, the better. And there's all my calculations and stuff together with, um, you'll see there's, the diagrams and stuff. And what I finally ended up doing was I made it the exact dimensions that you see in red. Now, that's important because the distance between the elements is important for the antenna to resonate at frequency as well. The, uh, the balance of the thing, the, uh, the, the length of these, I made slightly bigger because I did re read somewhere that uh, a fraction bigger gives you a slightly bigger bandwidth on your tuning, which worked. And, <laughs> uh, and of course the wire length's important. Making sure that the reflector is big enough to make this as square as possible and all the dimensions, and, it, and uh, as square as possible it kind of resonates better. So all my own calculations down the side here, rounded down and whatnot, calculations at the bottom, is, and everything verified as I went and rebuilt it. And that's basically, uh, as I built it, um, <laughs> as I put it up in the garage here, I'm lucky that I have this facility and it's just so, so good. So that's, that's it. The, the Moxon two element wire beam antenna for 11 meters or to be more precisely 27.000 megahertz. Okay, so that's the video on the, the tech of the antenna. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or you know how to contact me, most of my, my people on Facebook or whatever. But um, that's basically it. It's my way it's been done, or our way. It's a Scottish way it's been done, really. It's a Scottish mocks on. So far my tests in the field have been great, but the propagation has not been good. The weather's not been good, so weather not being good in the mountains is it's not very good at all. Anyway, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. This video I made 
specifically due to people asking me questions about this, about that, on Facebook, on even had a couple of Instagram questions and all sorts. So, uh, you know, keep it going. And this is me in response to that. So it works. This, this, this thing that I do works. Leave comments below. I respond to everyone that I possibly can. There is actually a way in YouTube of making sure you do that. And uh, likes, dislikes even, but all the feedback is really important. It makes me uh, aware of everything and stuff that people want to see, whatever, because the channel's not just about what I want to do, it's what I want to, it's what you, the viewer, wants to see. So, that's that. Thanks very much for watching. As I say, all the feedback, blah, 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 all that stuff. Remember, subscribe down there if you haven't already. Get other people to subscribe as well. And try to get this channel really going now. So anyway, all the best, the radio people, 73s. And until the next video, thanks again for watching. Ciao.